Chapter 21 Who's Paying for the Meal? You are listening at NovelFull.audio In everyone's eyes, Yun Chujio ran off in a panic because she was overwhelmed with grief. All of them looked at Bai Moyu, and their gazes were rather thought-provoking. Their eyes also shone with a desire for gossip. Oh my gosh, Yun Chujio just divulged a huge amount of information. A purpose that mustn't be known. Everyone knew that the Bai family and Yun family were enemies, so young Master Moyu definitely had a desire to know something or do something through Yun Chujio. We previously thought that Yun Chujio was the one who hung around young Master Moyu, but now, it turns out that young Master Moyu's the one who's been playing dirty tricks. Oh my goodness, how could he involve an orphan girl in his schemes? How diabolical! They then recalled what happened earlier in the day, Yun Chujio had obviously stated that she was not done eating, but young Master Moyu forced her to leave. It was completely different from what Bai Moru described. That was not Bai Moyu taking care of Yun Chujio, it was clearly Bai Moyu taking advantage of Yun Chujio. At that moment, a waiter from Immortal Gathering Tower suddenly shouted, Ah! That Yun Chujio didn't pay. She ordered all of our restaurant's signature dishes, and they cost a few dozen tails of silver. The waiter could not help but switch his attention to Bai Moyu. Yun Chujio's departure had a lot to do with him, so he could only get the money from him. Young Master Moyu, um, about that. The waiter was very smart. He did not ask for money, but he also did not finish his sentence. Bai Moyu was extremely angry right then. Why did that stupid Yun Chujio suddenly say those things? Who taught her to do something like that? He was worried about Su Yenran's possible reactions, hence he had to pay attention to her. If it had not been because of that, Bai Moyu would have chased after Chu Yunjio to ask her just what was going on. Bai Moru glared at the waiter. That piece of trash is the one who ate all of this food. What does it have to do with my brother? Scram. At this point in time, the onlookers really wanted to mock the Bai siblings, but they did not dare do so loudly. Nevertheless, their gazes were brimming with scorn, fully conveying their intention to mock the siblings. Just now, Bai Moro rambled on about how young Master Moyu took care of Yun Chujio. Now when it's time to pay for her meal, this Bai Moru is quick to say that they have nothing to do with her. It looks like what Yun Chujio said was true. Young Master Moyu was using Yun Chujio. Moru. Stop this nonsense. Waiter, I'll pay for Yun Chujio's meal. Hurry up and clean the table. Bai Moyu felt incredibly gloomy, but he did not show it on his face. Instead, he made himself look like a generous person. Cousin, my mood is ruined. Let's go back home. Su Yenran snorted coldly. She did not care about Bai Moyu's reaction and just proceeded straight to the entrance. Bai Moyu frowned a little, and a slight spark of displeasure shone briefly in his eyes. He threw some pieces of silver to the waiter before he chased after her. Little sister Yenran, Yun Chujio is under the care of the Yun family. Her foster parents died, and I just took pity on her. I did not expect her to misunderstand my intentions and continue bothering me. This time, she must be playing some kind of trick to get my attention. I think she's just pretending to pull away from me. She's really trying to get closer to me. That's true. Big sister Yen Ran, the people in Yi City all know Yun Chujio. She is just a piece of trash that can't practice cultivation. If it weren't because of my brother's kindness, he wouldn't have bothered himself with that dark and ugly waste of space. Bai Moru chirped up next to them, and her voice was full of disgust. Disdain flashed briefly across Su Yenran's face before it disappeared. The Yun family. The Yun family that has always been against your family. Bai Moyu nodded. Exactly. Oh, Yun Xiaotian, he's the head of the Yun family household, who by the way, is also at the sixth level in spirit refinement realm. Their strength is on par with our family. Su Yenran now had scorn on her face, but her look of contempt was barely noticeable. 
He is just at the sixth level in spirit refinement realm, and he can only rule over a small place like Yi City. In Towering Cloud City, he would only be considered to be of average strength. Bai Moyu smiled and said, Towering Cloud City is the capital, so it's only natural that plenty of talented people are gathered there. Bai Moru also spoke up by the side to curry favor. Big Sister Yen Ran, you're right. Even though you're just a year older than I am, you're already at the fifth level in spirit refinement realm. I'm so jealous. Chapter 22 Su Yen Ran you are listening at NovelFull.audio Once the Bai siblings flattered Su Yen Ran, she felt that her ruffled feathers had been smoothed over. Cousin, little sister Moru, you don't have to look down on yourselves. You're both already very amazing to be at the level you are in a small place like Yi City. When Bai Moyu heard what Su Yenran said, his expression froze for a moment, and he felt slightly unhappy. If it were not for the fact that he had something to ask of Su Yenran who was in front of him, he would have left in anger a long time ago. Su Yenran was the daughter of Bai Xu Yun, Bai Moyu's aunt. The Su family was a big family in Towering Cloud City, the capital of Donghua Nation. Back then, Bai Xu Yun had used a lot of methods before she could finally marry into the Su family. Bai Moyu secretly sent a signal to Bai Moru through his gaze, and she understood what he wanted. She then started to butter up to Su Yenran. Big sister Yenran, you've got a point there. Yi City is really too small. I heard that the Falling Cloud sect will begin its decadal recruitment of disciples soon. I wonder if you have any connections that might help a person get in. Su Yenran looked even more arrogant than before. The Falling Cloud sect has always posed strict requirements when it comes to their recruitment. You will need a referrer for registration alone, and the requirements for getting in will be even higher. Ah. Is that how it is? Then, my brother and I won't be able to even register. Bai Moru deliberately spoke with a disappointed voice. Su Yenran smiled proudly. If we're talking about other people, then there would be no way for them to get in. But my grand aunt is an elder in the Falling Cloud sect, and she loves me the most. So, if I refer someone to her, forget about getting the rights for registration, it won't even be a problem for me to get that person into the sect. Wow. Big sister Yenran, you're so great. Bai Moru wore an envious expression before she squeezed out an expectant look. Big sister Yenran, can you register me and my brother for the recruitment? That won't be a problem. When the time comes, I will register your names for you. Su Yenran said with a smile. She naturally understood that Bai Moyu and his sister had discussed this beforehand. In any case, once her grandfather gave the orders, his mother would have to agree to it. If that was the case, she might as well go with the flow and have these siblings be in her debt. Besides, their affinities were not bad. If they joined the Falling Cloud sect, she could have two more helpers. Env by Moyu's eyes sparkled faintly. He had spent so much effort in buttering up to Su Yenran through every means possible because he wanted to make sure that he could enroll in the Falling Cloud sect. As long as he could get into the sect, it would not be impossible for him to reach spirit being realm based on his affinity. Bai Moyu and his sister became more attentive to Su Yenran after their wish was fulfilled. Big sister Yenran, I know that our mood was ruined by that piece of trash in Immortal Gathering Tower earlier, so let's go to Leisurely House. It's not as famous as Immortal Gathering Tower, but the decor there is quite elegant, Bai Moru said in a fawning tone. Su Yenran pretended to be reserved and nodded. The three of them then went to Leisurely House, which was located two streets away. Young Master Moyu, ladies, please head to the private room on the first floor. A waiter saw them, and he came forward with a hospitable attitude. All right, we'll take Cold Plum Blossom private room, then. The decor there is refreshing and elegant, plus we can still view the scenery through the window, Bai Moyu said calmly. Dot um, young master Moyu, I would suggest that you switch to another room. Golden Autumn Pavilion is also one of our top. Grade private rooms, said the waiter in a troubled manner. 
by Moyu's face turned almost as sour as rotten milk. Did some unlucky spirit decide to visit him today? Everything was just not going according to plan. Cousin, my mom always told me how great my grandfather's family in Yi City is. But I never thought that despite being supposedly in power, it would be so hard for you to have a meal in Yi City. When Su Yen Ran saw how Bai Moyu and his sister kept trying to curry to her favor, she started to show her arrogant and willful nature. Bai Moyu found his ego slightly trampled, and his expression turned even more sour than before. Who is eating in Cold Plum Blossom private room? Tell him to switch to Golden Autumn Pavilion. I will treat him to his meal. Chapter 23 I will torture you to death today you are listening at novel full audio. The waiter dared not offend by Moyu, so he could only whisper that he would do as he was commanded before he ran up to the first floor. A while later, the waiter came back with a troubled look. Why dot young master Moyu, the customer, she refuses to change rooms. Su Yenran snorted coldly. Cousin, I think we can only head back for lunch today. If we continue dawdling around, instead of having lunch together, we'll end up having dinner. Does the person know that it's me asking her to change rooms? Bai Moyu's expression was sour like milk that had gone bad for at least a week. He burned with rage, but he could not vent his anger on Su Yenran. Therefore, he vented his anger on the customer in Cold Plum Blossom private room. I T that told her, B. But. The waiter looked distressed, as though he had something very inappropriate to say. But what? Tell me, honestly. If you hide anything, I will have someone dismantle leisurely house. Bai Moru felt annoyed too. Usually, in Yi City, her words held weight, and she was always the one giving orders. Yet, ever since Su Yenran came, she had almost become a young maid. The waiter shook with fright. I'll tell you. At first, the customer happily agreed to your request when she heard that someone would pay for her to change rooms. B. But when she heard that you were the ones paying for her, she immediately changed her mind. Bai Moro instantly erupted like a volcano when she heard those words. She's openly going against the Bai family. Ha! I'd like to see just who it is who has a death wish. Bai Moro fiercely rushed up to the first floor. The waiter was pale with fright, so he quickly ran to the backyard and looked for the owner of the restaurant. Bai Moru kicked the door of Cold Plum Blossom private room, and when she saw the person inside, she became even angrier. She saw a dark dot skinned girl happily gnawing on a drumstick in the private room. Yun Chujo. You again. Are you doing this on purpose? Bai Moru demanded viciously. Dot Yun Chujo cast a glance at her. Are you out of your mind? I came here first. Everything works at a first.com, first.served basis, you know. You took over my seat in Immortal Gathering Tower, but I didn't make a fuss about it. Now, you've followed me here. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? You. You. Die. Bai Moru was so angry that her face turned red. She jumped over and was ready to give Yun Chujio a slap on the face. Yun Chujio cursed up a storm in her heart. Are all the people here sick? Why do they always want to slap someone? Well, screw you. If your hand even touches me, I'll torture you to death today. Have a taste of my hidden weapon. Yun Chujio threw the drumstick in her hand, which she had not finished eating, by the way, at Bai Moru's face. Bai Moru was stunned, and she subconsciously dodged it. Yun Chujio quickly moved away and slid behind Bai Moru in a flash. Then, she kicked the back of Bai Moru's knee, and Bai Moru fell face first on the floor because she was caught off guard. Yun Chujio tapped a few spots on Bai Moru's body, and immediately after, to Bai Moru's shock, she found that she was not able to move at all. Yun Chujio picked up a bowl of hot soup from the table, and she poured it all over Bai Moru's head. Ah! The soup was so hot against her skin that Bai Moru screeched like a pig being slaughtered. Although it was not hot enough to disfigure her, 
a large part of her skin was still scalded red, and a few vegetable leaves also hung off her hair. Bai Moyu as well as Su Yanran heard Bai Moru's pain shrieks from below, and they quickly ran up. When Yun Chujio heard their footsteps, she sat back in her chair, picked up her chopsticks, and continued eating. Damn it! You've caused me so much trouble in two places, and I still haven't filled my stomach. What a loss! When Bai Moyu saw the situation in the room, he was full of confusion, Moru, what's wrong? Brother! Save me! Save me, please! The B asterisk TCH must have used some kind of unknown dark arts. I couldn't move anymore after she tapped a few spots on my body. Bai Moru screamed hysterically. Chapter 24 If I Say No You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Bai Moyu stepped toward Bai Moru and wanted to help her up, but Bai Moru could not even stand. Her body was as stiff as a corpse. Bai Moyu had intended to let Su Yenran take care of Bai Moru, but he never thought that Su Yunran would move back in disgust. She must have found the thought of helping Bai Moru incredibly disgusting because she even moved outside the room. So, Bai Moyu could only let Bai Moru lean on him. Yun Chujio. What have you done? Hurry up and treat Moru, or else I won't spare you. Yun Chujio bared her teeth. Bai Moyu, do you have a few screws loose in your head? Bai Moru obviously fell down because of her bad eyesight, and she even made my soup bowl topple over. I should be the one who exacting revenge. Sides, I'm famous for being a piece of trash. How would I have the ability to send her sprawling on the ground? Bai Moyu had doubts about the situation too. Indeed, Yun Chujio had no spiritual energy, and Moru was at the third level in spirit refinement realm. There was no reason for Yun Chujio to defeat his sister. Brother. Do you believe me or that wench? Bai Moru shouted with a quivering voice. She was now angry and terrified. Aside from her face, she could not sense her other body parts at that moment. After Bai Moyu heard what Bai Moru said, he glared at Yun Chujio with a dark look. Yun Chujio, I'll give you one last chance. Treat Moru immediately and kneel down to apologize to her. Yun Chujio put down her chopsticks and smiled faintly. And if I say no? Bai Moyu was stunned. He had never seen Yun Chujio behave in such a way. His impression of Yun Chujio was that she was a gloomy, cowardly, and foolish waste of space. Yet, even though the person in front of him did not have a change in appearance, her overall presence made it seem as if she had changed into another person. She was now like a sharp sword that could be unsheathed at any moment. Bai Moyu shook his head. The anger must be messing with my head. She's clearly a sorry excuse of a human being without any spiritual energy. That old Yun Xiaotian must have given her some poison or hidden weapons. If you don't do as I say, don't blame me for being merciless and disregarding our relationship. I'll tie you up and go to that old Yun Xiaotian to ask for the antidote in exchange for you. Asterisk slap. Slap, asterisk Yun Chujio viciously smacked by Moyu twice in the face. I don't care if you talk about me, but how dare you talk trash about my new grandpa. You're asking for death. Here are two reasons why Bai Moyu was slapped by Yun Chujio. He did not expect Yun Chujio to be that fast. He was holding Bai Moru. Yun Chujio had used up all of her strength to deliver those two slaps, which was why they delivered so much force that Bai Moyu practically saw stars. For a period of time, he did not manage to register what had just happened. Yun Chujio cast a glance at Su Yanran, who was still outside, and took the opportunity to grab something from Bai Moyu and Bai Moru's waists. It was their money pouches. Once she grabbed those items, she jumped down from the window of the private room. The instant Yun Chujio landed on the ground, she started to cry and wail. Ark. Murderer. Help me. That scumbag, Bai Moyu is trying to kill me to silence me. Help. Help. 
Nav OM, that bastard by Moyu wants to kill me because I revealed his true colors in Immortal Gathering Tower. Yun Chujio kept running with her short legs while shouting at the top of her lungs. Everyone on the street looked incredibly stupefied, and a second later, they turned into gossip mongers and started to discuss the matter with gusto. Oh gosh, I never knew that young Master Moyu was someone like that. You really can't judge a book by its cover, huh? You don't say. I always thought that Yun Chujio was the one bothering him. However, at the end of the day, he was just trying to take advantage of Yun Chujio. Now that he's done using her, he actually wants to kill her to silence her. How despicable. Exactly. How could he use such a dirty method to treat a young orphan? Truly. How shameless. When Yun Chujio heard the discussion from the crowd, she silently clenched the stolen money pouches hidden in her sleeve, and she felt delighted. She began running even faster. Chapter 25 Doing a great job you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Yun Chujio ran back happily to the Yun residence, and she was so happy that she could not even hide the smile on her face. Dot, thank you for your hard work. Go and get yourself some tea. Yun Chujio passed a small chunk of silver to the guards and skipped happily into the courtyard. Both the guards thanked her repeatedly while they thought, is the ninth young mistress possessed or something? She has given us money for two straight days, and she's even been very generous with the amount. When one of the guards noticed that Yun Chujio had walked away, he whispered, Luo Fan, the ninth young mistress has been behaving strangely ever since she returned yesterday. Zhang Yuan told me that yesterday, the ninth young mistress even beat up the second young master. What? The ninth young mistress beat up the second young master. How is that possible? I thought that the ninth young mistress isn't able to practice cultivation. The eyes of the guard named Luo Fan were wide open, and he thought that he had to be hearing things. It's true. Zhang Yuan's not the only one who saw it. Many people in the residence saw it too. The ninth young mistress told us not to talk about it. She asked us to say that the second young master fell down on his own. Lu Dong, based on what you're saying, are you telling me that the ninth young mistress has been hiding her skills all this while? Luo Fan still found Lu Dong's words unbelievable. Who knows? We just need to mind our own business and not offend the ninth young mistress. I heard that the second young master screamed horrifically like a pig being led to slaughter. Lu Dong could not help but tremble for a moment. While both of them gossiped about this softly, Yun Chujio had skipped happily to the spot outside Yun Xiaotian's courtyard. Grandpa! Grandpa! Young Jiu is here to visit you. Yun Chujio started to shout even when she was still far away. The corners of Yun Xiaotian's lips twitched. Aren't the changes in Young Jiu a bit too much? She was a quiet girl last time, but now, she's as energetic as a bunny. Come in. Yun Chujio skipped happily into the house and proudly said, Grandpa, I did a great job today. Oh. What is it? Yun Xiaotian tossed the question out casually without giving it much thought. He did not think Yun Chujio could do anything amazing. I revealed Slee's bag by Moyu's true colors, and I even poured hot soup on by Moru's face. Hee <laughs> hee. You'll never guess just how pathetic she looked at that time. What? You fool. You've caused a mess. By Moyu is at the fourth level in spirit refinement realm, and by Moru is at the third level in spirit refinement realm. If you really annoy them, what would happen to you if they injure you? Yun Xiaotian shouted. Yun Chujio was stunned for a moment, but immediately after, warmth filled her heart. My newfound grandfather keeps worrying about my safety, huh? Grandpa, don't worry. I know my limits. I tapped a few of Baimora's acupuncture points, and she's currently as stiff as a block of wood. Grandpa, when the Bai family comes over, I'll handle them, and I promise you, I'll crush their ego. Ha ha ha. Yun Chujio then narrated the entire process with wild gestures. 
Yun Xiaotian could not help but sigh when he saw how lively Yun Chujio's face was. It was no wonder why there were now rumors circulating around, saying that she had been enlightened overnight and become very knowledgeable. Be that as it may, Young Jio had changed too much. The previous Young Jio would not be able to think of so many dirty tricks as well as schemes even if someone held a knife over her throat and forced her to come up with them. After the mess Yun Chujio created, the rumors of Young Jio in Yi City could start to change. I thought that the acupuncture points you sealed would be automatically unsealed four hours later. Still, when Yun Xiaotian saw how lively Yun Chujio was, he was finally able to relax. That depends on the strength and technique. The acupuncture points I sealed on by Moru will only be unsealed after three days at least. Grandpa, it's time for us to empty the Bai family's pockets. After we cheat them of their money, we can share it among ourselves. Let's not give it to anyone else. Yun Chujio tried to butter up her grandfather. Humph. You rascal. You make me sound like I'm some money. Hungry madman, ahem, then let's do an 80.20 split. I'll take 8. tenths of the money we're going to steal from them, and you can take 2. tenths. After all, you don't use that much money since you're young. Yun Chujio found herself speechless. Chapter 26 I came for class you are listening at novel full dot audio. Yun Chujio rolled her eyes. So, we've been beating around the bush for so long because my new grandpa is also a money dot loving bastard. Grandpa, I'm the one who came out with this idea and sealed by Mora's acupuncture points. Isn't two dot tenths too little? At the very least, I should get half of the money, right? Humph. Why does a young lady like you need that much money? 30.70, the most I can accept is 30.70. Yun Xiaotian glared at her. 50.50, .50, let's make it 50.50, .50, or else, I'm going on strike. What are you going to do then? Yun Chujio put her arms akimbo while widening her eyes. Grandpa, even if we're relatives, we have to make things clear when it comes to money. It's a matter of principle. When Yun Xiaotian saw that Yun Chujio was as angry as a soaked kitten, he was amused. Young Jiu, tell me, why do you need that much money? If it's reasonable, forget 50.50, .50, I'll be fine with even giving you 7 dot tenths of the money. Yun Chujio stretched out a dark hand, bent her fingers, and said, First, I love delicious food but the food at the restaurants are so expensive. Yun Xiaotian was so angry that he nearly got a stroke. Look at this girl, she's hopeless. She only thinks about food. When Yun Xiaotian was about to scold Yun Chujio, Yun Chujio gave a mischievous smile and said, Second, I need to buy you gifts since you treated me so well, Grandpa. I want to show you my respect. You won't like it if I give you junk, right? Yun Xiaotian's anger instantly disappeared, and he felt so happy he was at cloud nine. If he did not hold back, he might have started laughing out loud in satisfaction. Yun Chujio peeked at Yun Xiaotian's expression, and she felt incredibly smug. Ha! You might be a cunning old fox, but you can't escape from me, the hunter. Oh ho ho ho! Third, my uncle, aunt, fourth brother, fifth sister, and young tenth will also need gifts. I've done many wrong things in the past, so I need to make up for my mistakes, right? Grandpa, asking for half of the money isn't too much now, don't you think? Of course it isn't. Young Zhou, I don't want their money anymore, you can keep all of it. Yun Xiaotian's heart burst with joy after listening to Yun Chujiu's sweet dot talk. Right now, forget about the silver, he would not hesitate in offering his life if Yun Chujio wanted it now. Grandpa, that won't do. I'm still young, and it wouldn't be good if I don't control my spending. You can keep the other half for me. When I get married, you can use it for my dowry. Yun Chujio grinned and said impishly. Yun Xiaotian laughed at Yun Chujio's sweet words. All right, all right. Then, I'll keep it for you first. Once you find your ideal husband, all of this will become your dowry. 
Yun Chujo continued acting like a spoiled but cute princess for a little while longer before she skipped off to look for Yun Chu. And while she scampered off, she started making sarcastic quips in her heart. You think this is easy for me? My original persona made too many mistakes, and I have to seize every opportunity to clear my name. Now, my new grandpa is basically on my side now, so I have to go to my eldest uncle's house to get his affection. When Yun Chujiu frolicked all the way to Yun Chu's courtyard, she learned that Yun Chu had gone to her classes. It was only at that moment that Yun Chujiu suddenly remembered that the Yun family had a cultivation hall. Aside from emergency matters in the family or resting days, all young members in the Yun family must attend classes in the cultivation hall. Since Yun Chujiu was absolutely hopeless when it came to cultivation and was constantly busy with trying to please Bai Moyu, she had never been to the cultivation hall before. Yun Chujiu blinked and ran off to reach the area outside the cultivation hall. The one who was looking after the cultivation hall was the fifth elder of the Yun family, Yun Xiaowen. When he saw Yun Chujiu coming over, he could not help but frown. Yun Chujiu, why are you here at the cultivation hall? I'm here for classes. Aren't all the disciples of the Yun family able to come for classes? Yun Chujiu tilted her head to the side and asked seriously. Chapter 27 Young Jiu, do you have a question? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The fifth elder found himself speechless for a moment. But as an elder, it would not look good for him to embarrass a junior, so he waved his hand. Go on in. But don't make a mess. Yun Chujiu could not help but did a secret eye roll. Do I look like someone who just fools around all the time? Yun Chujiu walked into the cultivation hall with a swagger, and as soon as she entered, she attracted everyone's attention. Oh, would you look at that? Yun Chujiu, what are you doing here? Could it be that the ultimate trash of Yi City cultivates now? A beautiful girl mocked. Yun Chujiu looked at her. She was the third mistress daughter, Yun Chuki, and she was the seventh child in the family. She looked down on the original persona and usually bullied her quite a lot. Chuki. An elegant girl glared at Yun Chuki before she spoke softly to Yun Chujiu, younger sister Jiu, why did you come into the cultivation hall? Why aren't you outside? Yun Chujiu's eyes flashed. Compared to Yun Chuki, this Yun Chushan is even worse. Yun Chushan was the third eldest child in the family, and she was Yun Chur's younger sister. The original persona actually thought that Yun Chushan was a good person, but many things that happened to her were because of Yun Chushan's bad ideas, and her original persona would always end up as the scapegoat. Yun Chushan had also been involved in how Yun Chujiu had ended up being so completely infatuated with Bai Moyu. When Yun Chushan saw that Yun Chujiu was not talking and was only staring at her with a pair of eyes as dark as the night sky, she could not help but panic a little. Younger sister Jiu, can you hear me? Yun Chujiu yawned. Ah. Well, I have nothing to do, and since I have nothing to do, I decided to come and see you all. Continue training, just ignore me. Humph. Who do you think you are? You came to see us. Why would we need trash like you to see us? Third sister, just ignore her. Yun Chuki glared at Yun Chujiu angrily and dragged Yun Chushan to the side. Yun Chujiu pouted and got close to Yun Chu, who was meditating and training. My dearest fifth sister, I'm here. Yun Chu's eyelids twitched slightly. Since you're here, just sit down and behave. The fourth elder will teach us in a while. The fourth elder is the most impartial and stern elder of all of our teachers. You must absolutely not cause any trouble. Yun Chujiu nodded repeatedly. Fifth sister, don't worry, you know how I am. I'm the most obedient person around. I won't cause any trouble. Yun Chu rubbed her forehead. It's precisely because I know just how you are that I'm afraid you might stir up trouble, all right. Yun Chujiu looked around curiously. This cultivation hall was actually just an empty big room. 
including Yun Chujiu, there were nine disciples of the Yun family here. And among the younger generation of the Yun family, only Yun Chuer was not around. Yun Chujiu did not care if others found her an eyesore either. She just nodded and smiled at everyone, creeping them out. This Yun Chujiu is normally gloomy, so what exactly is she up to today? All the muscles in Yun Chushi's small face tensed up, and he glared viciously at Yun Chujiu. But Yun Chujiu just stuck her tongue out at him. Yun Chushu found himself stunned speechless. At this moment, Yun Shaohai, the fourth elder of the Yun family, came in. The fourth elder saw Yun Chujiu immediately, and he was puzzled. Why is Yun Chujiu here? What is she up to today? The fourth elder gave Yun Chujiu a warning look. But to his surprise, Yun Chujiu just smiled sweetly at him, and her dark face actually looked a little pleasing to the eye at the moment. The fourth elder could not help but be stunned. He did not realize before that young Jiu had a pair of good dot looking eyes. They were clear and bright, like a clear spring. Though this was supposed to be a class, the learning progress of the disciples of the Yun family was different. In fact, most of the time, the disciples would just train on their own, and the elders were just responsible for answering their questions. Today was no exception. After the fourth elder came in, he sat cross-legged at the forefront of the hall and waited for the disciples to ask him questions. But there was no way Yun Chujiu would know about this process. She just widened her eyes idiotically and stared at the fourth elder. The fourth elder was a little baffled by Yun Chujiu's action. Young Jiu, do you have a question? Ha! Huh. Yun Chujiu was confused. What's happening now? Chapter 28 The Bai family came to their residence you are listening at novel full dot audio. Yun Chuki pouted. Fourth elder, this Yun Chujiu is just a piece of garbage that can't cultivate, what questions could she have? The fourth elder snorted coldly, and it was clear that he was displeased. Yun Chuki shut up in embarrassment but decided to direct her anger instead at Yun Chujiu by glaring at her. Dot Yun Chujiu shrugged. You're blaming me. It's your fault for running your mouth off, you know. Since you don't have any questions, just kultai. Rest well. The fourth elder originally wanted to tell her to train well, but when he remembered that Yun Chujiu could not practice cultivation, he forced himself to say, rest, instead of, cultivate. Yun Chujiu raised a little dark hand. Fourth elder, I have a question. In addition to the five elements, Gold, wood, fire, and earth, are there any other elements? No. The fourth elder frowned. What an easy question. Doesn't Yun Chujiu know the answer to this? Truly, she's ignorant and incompetent. Two disdainful snickers rose around her. One was from Yun Chuki, and the other was obviously from that little imp, Yun Chushu. Yun Chujiu ignored them and sank into deep thought. That can't be right. She had clearly absorbed dozens of purple light balls, and they were definitely not one of the five elements. Yun Chujiu could not understand what was going on, so she decided to just cross her legs, close her eyes, and sense the spiritual energy around her. Yun Chujiu looked like she was sleeping in the eyes of the other people. The fourth elder shook his head. This child's life can be considered ruined now. If she behaves, the family can provide for her, and she won't have to worry about anything. But if she continues to have ties with Bai Moyu, her life will end in tragedy. After four hours, the fourth elder announced the end of today's training and strode out. Yun Chujiu stretched, rubbed her eyes, and hugged Yun Chu's arm. Fifth sister, let's go. I'll go to your place for dinner today. I want to eat braised fish with brown sauce. Dry dot braised pork ribs, braised lamb with soy sauce. Yun Chushu glared at Yun Chujiu fiercely. Yun Chujiu, what mischief are you cooking up, exactly? If you want to eat, go back to your own residence to eat. Yun Chujiu rolled her eyes. Ah, you're so not cute. When Yun Chujiu was about to speak, 
Butler G. rushed over hastily and said, N. Ninth young mistress, the head of household asked you to go to the entrance. The Bai family is here. Yun Chujio's eyes lit up, and she let go of Yun Chuo's arm while she spoke excitedly, Butler G., come. Let's go together. Yun Chujio walked briskly with her short legs, and like the wind, she dashed off while dragging Butler G. off by the sleeve. TSK TSK, young Jio just dumped and forgot about you when she heard that my family came over, fifth sister. Seriously, she's really not worthy of your time. Yun Chuki said in a mystifying tone. Yun Chu cast Yun Chuki an indifferent look. We're all sisters. There shouldn't be any talk about whether anyone is worth anyone's time. Yun Chushu was standing at the side, and he clenched his fists. Yun Chu Jio. Yesterday, she said she wanted to turn over a new leaf, and she made a mistake again today. How despicable. Yun Chushu was so angry that his small face turned red. Elder sister, I told you that Yun Chujio will never change. If you don't believe it, I'll go and see what evil deed she did this time. Yun Chushu then rushed out, and Yun Chu quickly followed behind him. The others looked at each other, and each harbored their own thoughts as they followed them out of the hall. Butler Ji looked at Yun Chujio, who moved ecstatically beside him, and could not help but wonder. Why is the ninth young mistress so fast? This speed is about the same as those at the third level in spirit refinement realm. How is this possible? Yun Chujio ran to the entrance. When the two guards at the entrance saw Yun Chujio coming out, they quickly came over to serve her. Ninth young mistress, you're here. Ninth young mistress. Do you need us to drive them away? Once you give your order, we will immediately take action. Chapter 29 This is Blackmail. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Butler G. could not help but marvel about this. He knew these servants. Although they never said anything outright, they looked down on the ninth young mistress in their hearts. Why were these guards so attentive now? How strange. Yun Chujio straightened her petite body, and she waved her hand. All right, you two did well. Go to the back. Yes, milady. The two guards stepped back happily. Looks like the ninth young mistress was very pleased with their performance. We might get even more money from her later. For servants carried a soft couch, and thereby Moru laid, like a dead fish. When she saw Yun Chujio come out, she started shouting shrilly, Yun Chujio. You bastard. Pass me the antidote now, or I'll have my brother kill you. Yo, by Moru, what's the matter with you? Did karma strike so soon? By Moyu bullied me because I was young and immature and tried to harm me multiple times. At noon, he even tried to kill me. Did the karma from all his bad deeds land on you instead? Tisk, TSK. By Moru, as the younger sister, it's only natural that you atone for your big brother's sins, right? Why did you come all the way to make a ruckus at the Yun residence? Yun Chujio looked very puzzled and she did not care that her words had caused a stir of gossip among the onlookers. Yun Chujio, stop lying. You're just full of baloney. It's you who did this to me. Bai Moru was so angry that she almost passed out. After they returned to the Bai residence, Bai Moyu asked for a physician, but he could not figure out just why Bai Moru ended up this way. In the end, they could only suspect that Yun Chujio had poisoned Bai Moru, which was why Bai Moyu brought Bai Moru to Yun Chujio to settle this matter. Bai Moru, lightning strikes those who spew nonsense, you know. Who can prove that I was the one who did this to you? You're at the third level in spirit refinement realm, and I'm trash that can't even practice cultivation. How could I have possibly harmed you? My brother and cousin dot sister can prove it. You are the wench who did this to me. Bai Moru said through gritted teeth. Bai Moru, are you kidding me? The two people you just mentioned are on your side, it's only natural that they will support you. 
But it's different for me, a lot of guests in Immortal Gathering Tower and Leisurely House saw you bullying me, just so you know. When Yun Chujio said this, her eyes turned red dot rimmed, and her body trembled slightly. I was eating at Immortal Gathering Tower, but you chased me away, so I ran to Leisurely House to eat, and you went there to kill me. I could only jump down from the first floor to escape, aren't I just pitiful? Fortunately, I'm thin, or I would have definitely hurt myself from the fall. Boo hoo. You're both total bullies. Now, you even came to the Yun residence to smear my name and blackmail me. My fellow countrymen, your eyes are all clear. Tell me, don't you think the Bai residents are bullies? There were indeed some people in the crowd who were at Immortal Gathering Tower and Leisurely House for food at the time of the accident. When they heard Yun Chujio's words, they could not help but become indignant, and they hit their chests to verify her words. Yes. What the ninth young mistress said is true. She was eating at Immortal Gathering Tower, but was chased away by young Master Moyu. Yes. Exactly. When we were at Leisurely House, young Master Moyu tried to force the ninth young mistress to move to another private room. And later, the ninth young mistress was forced to jump out of the building. Yes, I heard it too. The ninth young mistress cried out for help when she fled at that time, and her voice even broke. The young boys in the Yun family became angry when they heard what the crowd said. Yun Chushu originally wanted to settle his score with Yun Chujio, but now, he felt that Yun Chujio was quite pitiful. She was actually bullied by Bai Moyu to this extent. Looks like she meant it when she said she wanted to turn over a new leaf. As the eldest brother, Yun Chui was the first to step forward. Bai Moyu, your family has gone overboard with your acts of taking advantage of the weak. Leave the Yun residence immediately, or we will show no mercy. Yes. Hurry up and go. If you dare to bully young Zhou again, we will not spare you. The others also spoke up. Chapter 30 She might have chest pains you are listening at novel full dot audio. When Yun Chuji saw that Yun Chui and the others had her back, her petite body quivered even more. Yun Chujio used her sleeve to wipe her tears. Boo hoo. I can't even be considered a decent human being anymore. Bai Moyu used me to do so many things that are harmful to the Yun family, and yet my brothers and sisters still protect me like this. I, Yun Chujio, swear that I will be eternal enemies against Bai Moyu in the future and guard the Yun family until my dying breath. Once Yun Chu saw Yun Chujio crying so badly, she found her heart going out to her, and she took out her handkerchief to wipe her tears. Yun Chui, too, thought that they had not paid enough attention to Yun Chujio before this, or else, there was no way Young Jio would have been tricked by that sleazy Bai Moyu. Eddie E. T. Yun Chuki was the only one who turned her head away and pouted because she did not believe in Yun Chujio's words. As for Yun Chu Shan, her eyes sparkled. It's no wonder why my brother said that Yun Chujio changed. She's really different from before. Yun Chujio tumbled into Yun Chu's arms as she sobbed and sniffled, but during that time, she was actually thinking. What the heck? How did Fifth Sister develop so well? This is a D cup, right? Ah, I'm so jealous. Bai Moyu's face turned red with rage. Bai Moru had been the one talking just now, and he did not have the chance to speak. He did not expect that Yun Chujio would be able to turn the tables with just a few words. We're the victims, but now, we're the slanderers and blackmailers. When did Yun Chujio possess such a silver tongue? Does it mean that everything from before was an act to deceive me? Yun Chujio, you know what the truth is. You better hand us Moru's antidote right now, otherwise, the Bai family will not let this slide, and we're not to be trifled with. Bai Moyu's expression was livid, and he wanted to strangle Yun Chujio badly. Yun Chujio was still sobbing softly, and she ignored Bai Moyu. Bai Moyu, Young Jio already made it clear that what happened to Bai Moru has nothing to do with her. If you don't leave, don't blame me for not being courteous. Yun Chui took a few steps forward. 
Bai Moyu gritted his teeth. Yin Chiyi was already nineteen years old, and he was also at the fourth level in spirit refinement realm. If he started a fight here, he would not be able to gain any sort of advantage. Besides, this was the Yun family's territory. What should he do? Even if his father and grandfather were to come here, as long as Yun Chujio refused to admit to what she did, the Yun family would protect her, and he would not be able to do anything to her. The Yun family was filled with people who had no sense of dignity as well. Yun Chujio had already betrayed the Yun family so many times in the past, and this time, she even stole the soul gathering pill, and yet they still defended her. Really, don't they have any dignity whatsoever? Young Jiu, I know you are angry with me. What do you want me to do in order to save Moru? I will meet every condition you make, even if you ask me to make up with you, I will. Yun Chui and the others immediately turned to Yun Chu Jiu. What? Did Young Jiu do this because she argued with Bai Moyu? Is she lying to us again? Yun Chu Jiu secretly cursed in her heart. This scumbag is really a sinister son of a gun. Bai Moyu, stop blowing your own trumpet. A sissy like you wouldn't even deserve licking my shoes. I will rather be a nun than marry you. Yun Chujio pointed at Bai Moyu and stomped on the ground as she shouted. The people of the Yun family felt relieved when they saw Yun Chujio acting like this. It seemed that Young Jio had really decided to reform herself. Bai Moyu's expression was livid with rage. This Yun Chujio. She's too despicable. I'll have to search for a chance to kill her, and only then will I be able to vent my hatred toward her. But what's important now is to cure Moru, and I'll settle this score slowly in the future. Once Bai Moyu thought of this, he forced himself to endure his anger and said, Yun Chujio, stop beating around the bush. Just what do I need to do for you to save Moru? Yun Chujio sighed. All right, then, you might be scum, but I have nothing against Bai Moru. It's a real pity that a healthy girl like her suddenly ended up like this too. Hmm. I think that she might be suffering from chest pains because of the fall. Maybe, probably, should be, yup. 